Welcome to the Any Given Chance podcast, stories about passion and sacrifice, what actually goes on behind the scenes in the consistent chase of everything. We're going to bring you some untold stories, some of people you know, some of people you don't. These stories that we bring on with our guests are nothing short of inspiring and will get you out there chasing your own goals as well. Join me, your host, 3AM365, Matty Menion, as we dive into these incredible stories. And of course, as the podcast grows, so do we together. So stick with us from the start, hit that like and share, subscribe button, get your family and friends involved, and we'll see where we are in a 100 podcasts. No days off, no excuses. Our next guest happens right here at my gym. I'm in here at 3 a.m. and I guarantee you, Luki Bashara will be following me in the door any minute now. The man is a freak, 42 years old, just cleaned up at the Natural Bodybuilding Association. I got to see it firsthand, his 10-month process, day in, day out here in the gym. His story, same thing, battling those demons in the head. Why do we do what we do? I really hope you enjoy this one. I'm going to have him back on the podcast very soon, and we're going to dive into some sports-specific stuff that he does. Lukey B. Oh, hey, brother. Yes, I got him. Welcome. Thank so, you, man. Any given chance, for first-time listeners, what we do is finding stories of people out there who, you know, all the hard work and sacrifice that goes beyond the, the scenes to, yeah. to do whatever they, you know, are throwing themselves into. Not many people see what you did, but mm-hmm. I got first-hand evidence because, mate, I'm in the door at 3, <laughs> you're in the door at 3.01. Yeah, not, not, so, not long after you, man. Yeah. Tell all the people who aren't watching what, what you actually did. Yeah, so um, I uh, decided to do a bodybuilding competition, not bodybuilding full tilt, uh, so the division that I did was men's physique. Um, and men's physique is a slightly different take on bodybuilding, so we wear board shorts at the end of the day. But it's something that I've always wanted to do again. Uh, so I competed back in 2016, and that was my first show. I did it all by myself, and um, I had a good run at it, but I just felt like I could give more, and I wanted to do more. So come this year, 2021, I decided to put my foot down and, uh, and give it another nudge. And went back in again, and uh, yeah, was it ten months? Ten months. So ten month process. Uh, that ten month process did that. that I went through. Um, I actually started like peak COVID. Um, basically, what I was doing through that was just walking and doing my own little bits and pieces at home. Obviously, gyms weren't open at the time, so I could only do what I was doing at home and the little bits and pieces that I could do and work with. And then, by the time the gyms opened around July. Um, Last year, I think it was, 2020. Um, yeah, I decided to sign up and get amongst it and start putting, putting my foot down and, and fucking really give it a really good crack at it. Not only did you give it a really good crack, <laughs> you cleaned up. Yeah, yeah. You won. You yeah, won. Yeah. You trophies, tank, tank, tank. <laughs> yeah. So what did you actually win? What division was it? Yeah, before I sort of go on with it, look, I um, when I competed back in 2016, I did it all by myself. Like I did... I. I researched the nutrition side of things, um, and I've been in the fitness industry for quite some time, so I had a I had a fair idea of what to do in, with regards to training. Mm. So I did it all by myself, and there were a few little setbacks coming off the back end of that that I didn't really prepare for, which I'm sure we'll get into a bit later on. But coming this time around, I decided I wanted to take a co- take on a coach. I needed a coach to help me get through to the next level of what I knew that I could get to in regards to my potential, but also help me through the process um, post-competition as well. Yeah, right. uh, currently, I'm not getting coached at the moment, but through the process of being coached, I was able to understand my body a bit more and understand what I was going through. So, yeah. and, and also just keep you online. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You, know, yeah, you yeah, start to drift yeah, or something yeah, like that. No, mate. Like, yeah. So was it was that online or how does that? No, happen? so it was in it was in person. Yeah. Um, so the coach that I was uh, with at the time was Brandon Kempter, uh, who goes under the name of BK Conditioning. Um, he's pretty well known in the in the natural uh, bodybuilding scene, which is the federation that I sort of went for. Yeah. I, I opted to go natural. So the federation that I competed in was um, ICN. I compete natural. So when when you say natural, obviously we're not talking about getting on the gear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not, but so they test. 
They do test. So yes. all the overall winners and first place winners get tested. Must get tested. Must get tested. And um, if you finish last, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. So if, you, if you're out there and you compete with I compete natural and fucking you're on the gear and, and you still beaten, don't get me, you might yeah. want to question what you're taking. Yeah, yeah. What are you, what are you doing, mate? <laughs> yeah. Um, um, but yeah, so I went with Brandon. Take and, up um, ice skating. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> try another yeah. sport. Yeah, try another sport. Um, so I went with Brandon. I've known Brandon for quite some time actually. Yes. I knew him back in 2016, and I did reach out to him after my first comp and then I had sort of had to like let go of that coaching so a few years had gone on by then and then yeah so I reached out to him again decided to work together and um, he is quite well known like I said in the natural scene and natural industry so yeah it was very very thankful that I was able to sort of become part of it uh, as his crew and, and work alongside him so yeah man so we did that and I took out the uh, men's physique open class second division so I won that I won my age category, which was 40 plus, so 42. 42. <laughs> 42. Yeah. Might not look like 42, but yeah, yeah, I won that one, and then I came second in the um, in the overalls. In the overall. Yeah, so that was uh, that was pretty cool. I Man, really, I really enjoyed that. That is um, a solid effort. Yeah. And like I said, uh, I got to see firsthand just mm. the progression, and I think that's why I wanted to get you on so much yeah. is because you played the long game, yeah, very, yeah, very, very much so, and meticulous with. Yeah. With bringing down your food, what you ate, I'd, I'd watch your stories, I'd watch yeah. your social media and what you're doing, and it would just slowly come down, yeah. and slowly come down. And, and I think there was a, a question on one of your social medias after you won, and you're like, someone asked you what body fat percentage were you, and you're like, mate, to be yeah. honest, I didn't know. Yeah. So, and I thought that was really, really interesting, going because most people uh, they gauge what they've done by numbers mm -hmm. or by or something like that, where you know. For you, obviously, you cleaned up with the win. Yeah. But, yeah, to, to see you're not worried about the, the numbers of your body fat percentage. Yeah, right? I mean, so some of the markers, um, so like I said, being coached by Brandon, I was very fortunate enough to be in-person coaching. So Brandon, um, I won't say where he lives, but he lives here on the coast. Yeah. So I was very, very lucky to have a one-on-one -on -one coaching session with him. And the coaching is just basically a catch-up. Yeah. He'll sort of run through my food, how things going. Yeah. How am I going with my daily routine? Was that once a week or once a week? Once a week. Once a week. Every once a week, we would sort of run through all these questions. Um, and he, at the time of catch up, we would do uh, a seven point pinch test. So he had a pair of oh, calipers. Right. Yeah. So he would sort of take my meals on that. But he never gave me an actual body fat percentage. I'm sure he could have worked it out. But we basically just went off the millimeters that he was pinching me on. And then systematically, over every week, over the course of 10 months, we would just slowly nudge away at the numbers. Yeah, right. um, and for his athletes, he likes to see them sort of stage lean. It will take a few weeks, but about a month out, and you'd be looking at around about 25 mil step on stage. But he likes to go a little bit lower than that. So I was lucky enough to fucking pull in the last couple of mil uh, <laughs> one week out to stage. So I came in at 23 mil. Well, mate, well, that's timing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I've had it with... You know, going back into boxing, last mm -hmm. time I was having a fight, I mistimed it. Yeah. Two weeks, I peaked two weeks before yeah. and got injured because I was doing too much and then I had to pull out of the fight. Yeah. So, mate, that timing was probably just yeah. as good as yeah. that. That'd be half of it because you can't stay at that level. No, no, not at all. You it's, can't, it's, it's not a sustainable yeah. way to, to live. Yeah. Um, and these are probably some of the things that a lot of people don't really see like you see me coming to the gym at three in the morning and i'm not your typical person that walks around with a singlet either like well, mate, I'm sure I, you could vouch yeah for it. I, I call you my silent yeah. partner you know what i mean we, we might get a head yeah. nod or we, we know what we're yeah. doing but you're yeah you're in your gear yeah. you know what you're doing have fun around. Hoodie on. yeah i'll walk yeah. around in the, in the gym still do to this day yeah. still walk around there with my hoodie on beanie on yeah i couldn't give a fuck if it was summer or winter I'm, i've got my longs on and everything so yeah. i don't really care and i'm just basically in there to do one job and that is just get the job done, get out, and then go about my day. But what people don't see is like physiological effects that this type of training or this type of um, prep, I guess you could say, yeah. what it does on your body. <laughs> You're literally in a state of starvation as you're coming into the last few months of um, getting ready for stage. Things are pretty low with regards to food. you kind of got to manage your energy levels and pick and choose like how you want to sort of place your energy level at some certain parts of the day you're constantly tired you're always dragging your feet and this is just like everyday things you know like just walking around the shops 
you can hear your feet dragging and you yeah. just feel like you're leaving your missus behind, or you're, you're, you're lagging behind your missus yeah. and all that type of thing. And Because you've got a big family as well. I do, man. So um, I've got two boys, 10 and 14, just uh, 14 this year, and a little girl that was born right in the first week of COVID. <laughs> so she's uh, 14 months now and I've uh, got one on the way as oh. well. So trying to do that, with, yeah, with back end of that, yeah. with that energy yeah. and working, yeah. Uh, it's, it's a recipe for disaster yeah. if you don't yeah. know what's going on and, and can see the trigger signs and can yeah. see, all right, well, maybe this isn't everyone else, maybe it's just me tired and yeah. I'm really, So, because you see a lot of people, like, especially social media, it's it's fucked. Yeah. You know, everyone putting their ripped up, blah, blah, blah. Mm. You, you can't sustain that. You can't live like that. No. Even like me coming out of my peak fitness, which after I've lost all the weight, and I got really low. I was like, this is unreal. Like, how good mm. do I feel? But I couldn't sustain it. And to try and sustain it there, I was diving and mm. getting angry and everything like that. And this is why I love to have anyone on the show because I really want to dive in there as well. As mm. much as I am love training and I'll go hard and all that, if I got to understand my food better mm. and why it does that, I think I'd be well on my way. Mm. I mean, I do get the basic gist of macronutrients, calories in, sure. calories out, but I mix my macros consistently. Like I yeah. might uh, range in from a carbonyl diet to a ketosis diet, and then I have too much protein, which knocks me out. Yeah. So I'm back. You know, the fat isn't getting burned. I'm, I'm proteins getting turned into glucose, sure. which is giving me the thing. So how did you do it? What kind of sort of meal did you start out with? What weight did you start out with? Yeah. And then how did you work it out and work backwards from there? Yeah. So the nutritional, I guess, recommendations that I did throughout this whole process was a flexible approach so flexible dieting and basically i tracked my macros so your protein carbs and fats throughout the whole entire duration well, let, let's, can i just start there what's more important is it calories in calories out is it being in a calorie deficient or is it getting your macronutrients right you yeah well, it all depends you know man okay. like it all depends on what your goal is yeah. So again, my goal was to stand on stage. Yeah. So in order for me to get there, I had to be in a calorie deficit. Now you got your eight week challenges and you got your twelve week challenges, and sometimes yes. you got your sixteen week challenges. Now they're all good. They're all good for a short sort of kick in the guts. Yes. And you know you probably could stand on stage, but that wasn't my goal. My goal was to be the next level of that conditioning, um, and that meant that I had to do the long path. There's an edit for me. Yeah. So we're not going to get it in one. <laughs> Yeah, so we're talking about you wanted to be flexible because you had to be in a calorie deficit. Yeah. So that allowed me to eat whatever I wanted to eat, but to a certain degree. So, fuck, if I wanted to have McDonald's or whatever KFC for the day, mm -hmm. I could eat it. But that would just mean that I would either have little to no food left for the rest of my day to try and manage how much protein intake am I going to get for the rest of the day, how much fat can I get for the rest of the day, and how much carbohydrates can I get right. for the rest of the day. Now, on the back end of that, again, it depends. Like, I've not done a lot of diets, but I've tried many. And what I've found and what works best for my body is a higher carbohydrate diet, a mid to low fat content, and protein's pretty much the base, no matter what diet you do. So for me, I kept my carbohydrates quite high during training. Rest days come down just a little bit. And then fats, as we went through the weeks and months, they were slowly coming down. And that was the approach that I took. Now, flexible basically means, like I said, I could eat whatever I wanted to eat, but I would sort of systematically use certain foods um, so I could literally eat more of it. More yeah. so vegetables. Um, I'd eat a lot of white so, fish. So low-calorie foods, so you yeah. could have more of it. Where if you were talking about McDonald's or something like that, that's a high calorie, high sugar yeah. crap, which will spike you, and within half an hour you're going to be yeah. hungry again. Yeah. But you've got 200 calories left in yeah. what you've planned out, so you ain't eating. So I, I never touched any shitty food no. throughout, the, throughout the entire prep. Um, and when I mean shitty food, I mean like takeout foods. I never touched any of that. I cooked every single one of my meals, not just for me, but for my whole family as well. So whenever I'd get home from work, I'd be in the kitchen, and fuck, my missus can vouch for this. It was the first thing I did when I get home, I'd be in the kitchen, I'd do my meals for the day, I'd cook her meal, I'd cook the kids' meals, and then we'd all be sitting at the table and there's me eating my meal according to, that's, to my calorie count and then the rest yeah, of the family's eating their meals. That's know? huge, hey, because when I cook, and I love cooking, yeah, it's it's on song. When yeah. I'm too busy or, you know, I've had my first kid, first child, mm. and that's been ha having, you know, he came eight weeks early, so we are at the hospital there yeah. for a bit, and as soon as I stopped cooking, 
you lose control. Yeah. And there's nothing good out there quick. No. Zero. <laughs> like, zero, like it, you might get a salad, but, you know, even if you get a salad from Subway or something like that, good yeah. chance it's been packed for 30 days. Yeah, yeah. Just cry back yeah. to be bought in or, you yeah. know, not back in Subway. Or <laughs> I'll get it. But, yeah, so preparation <laughs> was your key, basically. 100%, man. Yeah. 100%. Like, I was always prepared no matter how my day went, no matter what happened in my day, I would 100% be prepared for the So that was day. first on your list. 100%. You're, you're up on preparing and yeah. then my day will start. And then my day will start. And the hard thing, like the other thing too is, man, like during that time, like our, our little girl was on solids. So preparing her food on top of everyone else's food, plus my food, it was pretty tough to try and get through a day of doing that and then to have to come home and do it all start again. Start again. So it just felt like I was a, I was a fucking robot on repeat every yeah. single day. But... That's shit that I had to do to get it done, to get the job done. Yep. And I did it, man. Like, I was able to do it. And again, my missus was a, a big part of me getting there. She yeah. was a huge support process for me and um, being able to be that person to be there next to me and, yeah. and, and help me get through it and just know that everything that I'm doing is, it's, it's okay. Yeah. It's only for a short time. You're not doing this fucking thing forever. You know, ten months. Yeah. It's only a short time. <laughs> 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 yeah. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah. It's only it's it's about life forever. Yeah. But as you, as when you're in it, man, like yeah, ten months. And when you work out your numbers, it's like fuck. That's that's fuck. That's a long time, man. But it goes. It just it? goes. And when you're in it and you're doing it and you're in the grind, you're just fucking ticking the boxes yeah. every single day. Well, that's how I break down my weeks. Believe it or not, is my multivitamins and all that. And I take sort of more liver sort of yeah. multivitamins and all yeah. that now. But old man, pill case yeah. with two weeks worth. Yeah. Yeah. I've planned out my two weeks and before I blink, there's three left. Mm. I'm like, I've got through two weeks of me mm. planned programming. Fill it up, that's a month. Yeah, It goes. It goes very, very quick. Yeah. And that's the thing that I found getting back to being fit and healthy and whatnot. When you're a fat slob that I was, and everything seemed to drag out and Maybe because I was lying in bed watching Netflix, but <laughs> Uber Eats, like getting the shits at the world. But when you're fit, flying, and going hard, it feels like there's not enough else mm. in the day. Like mm. you said, you're in the gym, you train, then you go to work, yep. then you're at home in the kitchen doing all that meal yep. prep. That is a big day. Yeah. And then it starts again. Yeah. And then you go again. And it's like Groundhog Day. Yeah. Every single day. <laughs> Coming into the back end of prep as well, there were days where um, as my workouts, we're starting to get more involved, more with regards to the training side of things. Because I was on such a time frame in the mornings, because I would get there early in the morning, I'd roll, I'd stretch, I'd do my workout, but I had to get out of there by a certain time mm -hmm. to get to work. So I'd never get my workout finished and it would fuck with my head because I'm like, well, it's like, my competition. I'm not finished. Yeah. So then I'd go to work, do all my shit at work, <laughs> pack my shit up, go back to the gym, oh. finish the day off. And make sure that I that I had ticked that okay. box that I'd finished it yeah. off. My way of thinking it and training and whatnot is, yeah, you know, more is the key, but not blowing yourself out to yeah. like high ten, you know, hundred percent efforts, yeah. and then you need a day off, and then a hundred percent effort. Yeah. Mine is consistent flow, build, and all that. But you, like you said, if you miss that one, like you said, mm. then you, especially if you're going into a competition or when I was going into a fight, and I'd be thinking. Or even playing rugby league back in the day, if you got an injury, yeah. you know, someone's making up ground on yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Someone's catching you. As much as I do, I train at 3 a.m. in the morning and I get up and I run and all my mates go, sweet, you're crazy, whatever. I'm running. There's an old boy running the other yeah, way. Yeah. And there's two other guys who are yeah. already out there. And I'm like, <laughs> yeah. how did this happen? Like, yeah. So there's always someone out there chasing your tail or, or always, doing something more crazy. Yeah, so. that was always in the back of my head that, if I had not finished that workout or I've not ticked that box, then someone else is ticking the box. Yeah. And I didn't like that. No. And I wanted to tick the box before they could even fucking think about pulling And imagine if you got second. Yeah. Imagine <laughs> if you got second and they go, oh, we just, yeah, that bit, you'd yeah. be filthy. Yeah. So, oh, man. Yeah, so not a day went by where I didn't miss a, a workout. I didn't miss a meal. I didn't miss ticking that box. And to me, wow. that was just, if I had done that for the day, then I knew that, that my day was complete. So did you have... We're talking about ticking boxes. How did you do it? How did you just know? Head, just man, you? Just mental. Just, just the had mental, it. Just the mental side of things okay. that, that I would do every yeah. single day to myself <laughs> yeah. and just keep that running tally in my head. And not a day went by where I didn't miss that box. And there were times, man, 
and again, my missus can vouch for fucking everything that I'm saying here. There were times where I'd get home, um, you know, from work and I'd have to cook everyone's meal. I hadn't ticked the box. I hadn't finished what I was doing. So I'd fucking rush back to the gym, finish that off, get back. And they'd be like, oh, I still have to finish off this one last thing. And I'd be out there at 9 o'clock at night, 10 o'clock at night, trying to finish off the fucking day to be back in the gym by 3 You're <laughs> fucking crazy. So I had to do it. I had to well, do it. Yeah, I, I know what you're saying because I've been on runs with mates and, you know, they'll pull up on runs and my watch will say 5.98 kilometres. Mm. And I'll go, but boys, six kilometres is there. No, no, we're done. Yeah. No, it, that'll tip yeah. me until it's crazy. So... Wow, man, that's nuts. Yeah, like every day for 10 months, like, I suppose the results spoke for themselves. But um, before we go into your training sort of efforts mm. and what you did for there, so what sort of calories were you on yeah. daily and it, how did you bring that down? Yeah. Was it- so at the start, um, when I first started, my weigh-in at the start of prep was, uh, I'd say, 85 kilos. So it was 84.7, pretty much fucking rounded up, 85 kilos. That was the start of prep. Um, now... Working with Brandon, at the day one, he put me on 2,800 calories and I almost fucking fell off my chair because I was like, well, fuck, well, that's yeah, right. more than what I've been eating. Yeah. Um, so he's like, yeah, well, I just want to see where you're at and we'll work with that at the moment. So for three months, he actually started increasing my calories to the point where I was, and you know, you hear a lot of people out there that they eat 4,000, 5,000 plus calories. I was never that person. But my calories got quite high to like the mid 3,000, so 3,500 calories a day. Really? That was in the first three months. Then prep started, which was basically the next. So what was the reason of that? Was that, were you in a surplus then? Yeah, so we started in a surplus. He just wanted to sort of increase energy at the the beginning of prep, Um, you know, maybe try and get a little bit of muscle if I could. Not going to gain a lot in three months, but just to try and increase some energy where he could, maybe even put on a little bit of body fat. But my weight stayed the same. So for three months at eating at a, at a pretty high surplus for, for my body, my weight stayed, managed to be around 85. So basically what he sort of gauged there was maintenance. So I could pretty much sit at 85 kilos mid to sort of like 3,500 calorie mark. And, and you work in a lab. Dude. I work in a, yeah, so we make... So is um, it just, just so people can get a gauge of, you're not a trader. You, no. You're not... You're not Rendering or anything yeah. like that because 3,500, I assume you would have. Yeah, if I was a tradie, I'd be on a lot higher. And that's yeah. where you probably hear about the people that are, are on such a higher calorie yeah. surplus. But I don't think their body can stand handle that. Because you can't. You can't render trade all day and, and do and your, eat that. Yeah. And do your training, yeah. what you're doing, and think your body's going to stay together. Yeah. So And, um, and it's a lot of food, man. Like 3,500 calories is a lot of food. Yeah. You add another 1,000 plus calories onto that and you're... You just find yourself eating all day, every day. A lot of the calories that I ate at the beginning did come from liquid calories. Yeah. Um, like not fucking shit calories, like drinking cokes and things like that. I'd have juices and stuff in the morning, like orange juice and apple okay, juice, and yeah. try and boost it up. Yeah. Um, and then obviously, yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd eat a lot of whole foods as well. So yeah, so for three months, we were around about 3,500 calorie mark. And then we started your contest prep. And then basically each week we would just be chipping away at that number and we would bring it down. So my lowest calorie intake, which would have been um, sort of like your last three weeks coming into prep, was around about 1,800 calories. So almost half of what my intake was at the start. And we come down to basically, yeah, 1,800 calories three um, three weeks out from comp. With that being said, the, your, your macronutrients that make up your calories, your protein, carbs, and fats. Um, again, carbs are set quite high, and then they would come down as the weeks would come along. Um, now, the numbers that I had during my the last few weeks into, into stage, they were pretty low for what people might, might hear or might actually do. So my fats went down to 25, 25 grams a day. Now, that's fucking pretty low for a lot you of people. You should see what fat I eat. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So 25 grams of fat a day. Um, protein was around about 215, 220 grams. And then my carbs were sitting around about 150 to 190, maybe 200. And that's quite hard to fucking manage your food intake when, yeah. you're, when you're on numbers like that. And being in a flexible 
approach throughout the entire approach. Because you need to find foods that suit that mold, don't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. So, so I, I, I ate fucking a lot of fish. Yeah. A lot of white fish, a lot of asparagus. Now, this is the end of coming into the end of prep. A lot of asparagus, um, a lot of zucchini, and um, what else was I eating? Rice. Rice, Rice was good. Um, yeah, man. So Actually, there wasn't a lot of food choices that I could have. What was the fill up day? What was the re energy day? Because there was yeah, a Sunday so, or Sunday yeah. that I'd watch every day. Yeah. Oh, what's he going to eat now? Yeah. What's he going to eat now? <laughs> so, with all those numbers being said, I did have a refeed day. Mm. Um, and some of those days would be two days, so back to back. And there were a few days, a few weeks where I got a triple refeed, which, like, fucking rock my world yeah so three whole days of eating that like basically going back to a higher level of um caloric intake so and that basically just came in the form of carbs yeah um so i was able to eat more carbs on, on certain days and that just allowed me to get my energy back up because like i said um prior your energy levels are quite low you're dragging your feet you're just you feel like you want to sleep every single fucking hour of the day like you and but you just have something in you to get through your yeah. through your workouts, man. And like I'd rock up Tuesdays and Fridays with my leg days, and I just walk in there going, "Fuck, <laughs> fuck, am I gonna do here?" I'm no, like, Daddy, no. Two thousand calories, <laughs> yeah. Like, fuck me, dead. And I'd, I'd get through it. I, yeah, I'd just look over. At three in the morning. Yeah, the corner. Yeah. yeah, and on it goes. Yeah, Stay, mate. I, some mornings I reckon you would that play that you'd struggle to pick up. Yeah, plate. yeah, yeah, man. And I'd watch you put the plate on, and then I'd watch you yeah. put on three or four more, and I'd be like, he's fucking going to pick that, what's he? Yeah. And then off you go. And there'd be times I'd be sitting in the gym going, well, the fucking bench is over there, and I need to be over there. Like, I don't want to move the nah. bench over there to get over there. Like, is there a fucking another yeah. exercise that I could do that mimics what I'm about to do? Oh. So, yeah, your, your energy levels are, they just fucking, they play with you yeah. all day when you're in such low, low, cool yeah. and taking it. Um, it's not good. It's, it's like I said. It's not a. It's not a sustainable way to be. Right. Yeah. I mean, like a lot of people can be shredded all year round, but that wasn't my goal. No. no. I had one goal, and that goal was to fucking step on stage and do what I had to do. But mind you, if you rip your shirt off now, I guarantee you'd be shredded more than ninety nah. percent of the people <laughs> out there. So don't go anywhere about that. Yeah, I found out with eating and whatnot. Well, for bigger people, when when I had all that fat on me, so I went off the rails. Being in a calorie. You know, deficit yes. and such a. I was ridding myself, of starving myself, mm. but I wasn't starving because I was in a, you know, zone of ketosis. Mm. I was burning fat for fuel, yep. and my body had excess fat, sure. so it had storage to go to. Um, and I always talk about this to people when I, I sort of suggest, you know, a ketosis diet or, or you know, a more carnival sort of diet. And by no means am I a dietitian or anything mm. like that. This is from my personal, mm. you know, experience. But I always say to them. People go, oh, I get a keto diet, we get to put, eat all this fat now and we just throw away the bun and we can still eat the KFC chicken in the middle or, yeah. or the hamburger or, yeah. you know, we get all this fat and I'm like, you've got excess fat on you. Before you just throw ec extra in there, because it's very dangerous, yeah. um, you know, let's burn this, let's use that as energy and mm -hmm. all that first. reason I'm speaking about this is you're the opposite end of the scale. You don't have that extra fat at all on you to yeah so if your body's in a deficit it's not grabbing any fat no. for fuel no which is why your carbohydrates were so high because yeah. that was your fuel you needed yeah. to rely on the best way i describe it is um you know fat for me was was a log on the fire sure and carbohydrates are sticks mm. so you get sticks burn out you need to refill your sticks mm. you need to refill your sticks and that's that's your carbohydrates yeah. so yeah i guess you had to be bang on with what you're doing otherwise those energies like yeah, what you said, every really. day, man. Like I said, I just and again, this is what worked for me. I'm again, I'm not here on your show saying fucking increase your carbs. Yeah, that's, that's right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, this is everything. There'll be people who do that, man. Yeah. They get, they love their yeah, proving can, it wrong. I can tell you all the numbers throughout yeah. my entire prep. I tracked everything. Yeah, I could tell you every fucking single thing that I ate. But so how did you how did you track it for me? Well, uh, so yeah, so I use the fitness tracker, which is my fitness pal. Yeah, it's a pretty common one that a lot of people use. Yeah. You found um, that to be accurate. No, it's not one hundred percent accurate. Okay. So, um, what did you do there? Because I find that I know now. Yeah. I, I pull something up and look at it. I go, "That's not right." Yeah. Or even if you use the green tick ones that yeah. they, they say, I go, "That's still not right." Yeah. It's, and again, uh, again, I ate the same shit. Okay. Every single day. So, so basically, the foods that I tracked, yeah, probably not the most one hundred percent correct item, but 
if I was 100% on with every single food that I was eating, then I know that even though the numbers weren't matching up in my fitness pal, that I was good. You were good. I was, okay. I was doing good. Yeah. So again, I ate the same pretty much. And again, I've spoken about it a few times being in a flexible approach. Although I had the flexible approach to eat what I ate, I still ate the same shit every single day. I yeah. ate rice, I ate chicken, I ate white fish, I ate asparagus. Mm. I ate, you know, I made sure to get my fruits in as well. And yeah, like I just I stay to the to the same shit that I knew every single day. Every single day was just like a fucking monotonous fucking here we go again. Next. Get up. Next. Three Next. o'clock. My alarm's going off. Let's here go. we go. Oh, another yeah. ride, another ride. All right, so yeah, mate, the the discipline you've had to have to do that as well is the ten months day in day out is absolutely mental. <laughs> and I I guess we'll get into you. You're crazy mm-hmm. head very soon. But what lifts were you doing? What cardio were you doing throughout this period? Yeah, so the training that I did throughout the entire process was basically three upper, two lower. So basically what that means in the upper body was all sort of push and pull on the one day. So, so for people out there, like early listeners, when he says push and pull, it's like if you're doing a bench, a chest, you're doing a back. Yeah. If you're doing a curl, you're doing a try. Tricep, yeah. So just... Even out, yeah, everything, yeah. So, so push pull, yeah, but pretty much. And then so it was three upper, two lower over the course of uh, a given week, and then I'd have two rest days as well. So that was basically how my structure was for the given week. In regards to lifts, so I don't squat and I don't deadlift. I did not touch those two movements. Thankfully, at the so Train Fitness First at Rabina, they've got a machine there that can mimic a squat, which is a V squat machine. Why don't you squat? Because my hips are fucked. And my lower back is jarred up. Fair and, enough. Yeah. And that was one of the first things that I said to Brandon. Um, Brandon's a big lifter. He's a heavy lifter. He loves yeah. his big lifts. He loves his three main lifts, that being bench squat deadlift. And one of the first things I said to him, I said, bro, like, um, I'll give you 150% and I'll, I'll go 100. But I can't, I can't squat yeah. and I can't deadlift. And he just went, sweet. You know there's fucking 300. Yeah. 300 other movements that yeah, we can yeah, do. Yeah. You don't have to do those movements, man. I'm like, oh, fuck, that's just made my day. So, yeah. Um, so, squat, squat, and deadlift, they're gone. And basically, I did V squat, which is a machine that sort of mimics that movement. You get a back rest that does support your back and you can sort of go to your own. So, that's that sort of, instead of putting the weight through your hips and all that, it focuses more on more your point. muscles yeah. taking over and taking yeah. control. Yeah. So, it puts a lot of the emphasis. Um, not a lot of the emphasis, but it does sort of like give you that stimulation that you need in your quads. Yeah. And that's basically it, man. So uh, high reps was high intense training. So when I originally signed up, I thought, oh, we're going to start off pretty slow here and get the old fucking three by eight. Yeah. You know, three sets of eight <laughs> yeah, and sort of yeah. work on that. I remember walking in the gym on Monday and the, um, the first movement was uh, an incline bench and it was uh, one set at whatever weight it was for eight reps. I was like, oh, sweet. Fucking, what's the next one? <laughs> Second set was at uh, 25 reps, and then your third set was as many as you could. Ah, and I was like, what the fuck's going on here? Ah, and it was basically like that the entire way. And then w- walking out of there that day going, what yeah, have I done? Yeah, <laughs> so um, working off like three to four sets per, per exercise on, on any given day, and rep ranges were between eight to fucking 50 reps yeah. um, on certain certain movements. Wow. And that was my training. Cardio, I did zero. Um, now, when I say zero, basically my cardio for the given week was tracking my steps. Yes. Um, so I had to make sure that, and again, going back to ticking Tick the, the box, box, I had to make sure that that box was ticked every single day. So this is where I would get home after work, do everything that I had to do, and I'd be fucking out, walking, walking down to fucking Woolies at 10 o'clock at night, just to, to try, just to try and get a fucking walking down to Woolies to look at the ice cream. <laughs> yeah, hey, mate. Yeah. All right, let's go. Just to try and get my, my step count up. So that's yeah. basically that was my cardio for the entire process was wow. tracking my steps. So nine k a day, which is what we started with every single day, and then coming to like the back end of prep, like the last probably maybe month leading to last month of prep was we boosted that to eleven k a day, and that was it, man. Like. Wow. It, it fucking, it's not rocket science for what I did. Yeah. You know, I honestly thought I was going to get these sort of like fucking big out of it fucking workouts I was going to be doing and these full 10 minute hit 
training sessions. Like I, I've known you for quite some time and you knew what I used to do. Yeah, that's right. And then so coming out of that realm of a high intense training system yeah. to like, you're just going to walk, bro. Yeah. <laughs> just track your steps. Yeah. And I'm like, what? <laughs> what do you mean? Just walk. But do you know what, man? As hard as my training was throughout whatever day that I was training, whether it be legs or a fucking intense upper session, it was the steps. The yeah. fucking steps would ruin me. Yeah, right. <laughs> I could just, and it would get to my head, literally take over me. Like, I'd just be like, you're fucking kidding me. Like, I have to get these numbers. Why are you a bitchy little thing like that annoying me and every you can't, single day? You can't run. No. Because, run, like, I know myself now that I've taken up the grand old sport of running for some stupid reason, that muscle don't grow. I don't have legs mm. anymore. And as much as I want to do legs, I do legs. If I do too much legs, yeah. I can't run. If you run while trying to maintain weight, it, it'll eat that. Yeah. It'll eat your muscle. Yeah, and you yeah. know, like, there's a lot of competitors out there that their own sort of like version yeah. of cardio training. I guess, yeah. I guess like they they do hit. I know a few people that do like your 10 minute sort of like fucking hit training sessions. Just like, like trying so high intensity high interval intensity training. Interval training. Yeah. Twenty um, on, ten off, or something yeah, like that. Yeah, just something. Twenty like that. seconds on. Yeah, go just to mental. Get a, get a massive sweat up. Breathe. But for me, that wasn't that wasn't it. No. Um, you know, All the consistency, yeah, and, and just the grind and, the, and just chipping yeah. away at it, man. And it, you probably did see me in the gym there. Where I'd just be fucking on the treadmill. Yeah, you know? and yeah. that's. I used to look at people walking on the treadmill, going, "Oh, fuck, have a look at this dude!" Like you know, get out here and do some burpees and do some shit and whatever. And. In the end, I became that person. person that is, sitting in the corner. Like, sitting up on a fucking 10 incline. and Mate, that's know. how I started back. Mm. I'd, I'd walk 100, I'd run 100 on the treadmill because I was the outside ground to hurt too much. Yeah. And, um, but I'd find zoning out on there would be all right. You'd put, yeah. put something on and just yeah. get, just get yeah. it done. Yeah. So it was, it's actually, and this is why I run now, is it's actually therapeutic mm. to me. I, I get to zone out. I get to, you know, you got one job, run, yeah. sh- run straight. <laughs> you know, uh, you don't have to think about lift or, or locking in or yeah. getting it up. So, um, yeah, yeah, it has it, it has its purpose. So yeah. if you're listening out there and, you know, you, you're stuck for anything, you go, oh, I don't want to run or I'm injured or anything like that. Walk. Just walk, man. Walk I've, I've told a lot steps. of my mates, um, and this this came in when fucking COVID hit the world, you know, like mm. everything fucking shut. And at that time, like, I loved going to the gym. I loved doing, oh, yeah. I loved doing the hit training and I loved doing all that type of shit. And then when COVID hit, I'm like, what the fuck am I going to do now? Mm. Um, so I downloaded Goggins, fucking You Can't Hurt Me, woke up three in the morning and started walking. And that Three was years. it. In the ears every single morning, and that literally got me through in regards to my fitness sort of fucking path. Yeah. Got me through COVID. Listening to him and listening to his story every single morning and walking. Walking, I can't, I cannot speak highly enough about walking. There you go. And it was, to me, it literally got me past COVID and sort of like set me straight. And then again, it became part of my fucking routine to, yeah. to take me to stage. So you could say I walked myself onto stage. Yeah. <laughs> wow. Furthermore, into it, we were talking about throwing goggins in here and that, yeah. you know, with such a busy lifestyle, such a, you know, your job and your family and that, that half an hour to yourself yeah. is, and this is why I, I speak about 3 a.m. Like, th- I'm not crazy. Well, we're not crazy at 3 a.m. It's just that our day starts at 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. So if you're an office worker and you're out there and you're starting at 9, you're 3 a.m. 7. Yeah. Or, you know, so your alarm goes off at 6.30, you're at the gym by 7, yeah. you get your hour, an hour and a half in, then you go to work. So, it's, yeah, 3 a.m. sounds mental, um, what I've taken on. And there's a funny story to how I actually got to 3 a.m. Yeah. I'll tell you in a sec. But that, for me, is two hours before my day starts mm. with work and whatnot. So it's not that crazy. So anyone out there who goes, I can't do that, I can't do that. Yes, you can. Yeah. It's just two hours before and you go out and get your stuff done. The beauty about 3 a.m. for me is no one's fucking about. Yeah. When you run, you don't have to deal with a million cars trying to run you over or a million baby mummers with their prams. Yeah. No offense, mom, baby mum right over there. <laughs> she can take me out later on. But uh, and at the gym, we get it to ourselves for the first hour. Yeah. There's three or four of us in there. Mm. Um, and I love that. Mm. I, I hate being in there in an afternoon session yeah. with 50, 60 people. Yeah, and that was, again, that was a, the conscious decision that I made like yeah I mean I could get my workouts done in the afternoon yes. after work like I, I 
I'm very fortunate enough that I finish work at two most days, if not every day. So that still gives me time to go to the gym and you know get a workout in. But the gyms are packed. Yeah. Fitness first, like all beer to them, man. Great gym, but they're, they're too busy at that time yeah. of the day. Crazy. And then you know you're walking around trying to wait for equipment. Yeah. And then the other thing for me as well is, although what I was doing, having to leave my family in the night. I was still able to come home yeah. and be with them. That's so right. Could, it was a it was a sacrifice. Yeah, but you weren't willing to sacrifice quality time. Exactly right. Yeah. yeah. So for anyone once again listening out there, you just got to be like your food prep. Mm. You just got to prepare. You just got to suss out your situation and make a conscious decision of all right, that's my time. That's now, and that's not going to affect you. Mm. Planning is the key. Planning mm. is everything. Mm. Cooking, meal prep. Yeah. Um, you know, when you're training and whatnot, just go buy a book and write it down in a yeah. book. That's your first stage. And then that's your first week done. And then we'll grow from there. Yeah. But if you just go, oh, I'm going back to training, I'm going to do this, and it's erratic, and you're a morning one and you're afternoon there and you're that, you, I guarantee you'll be all over the show. Yeah. All over in a week. Yeah. All over in two weeks. Definitely. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was a one thing that I made sure that I wanted to have is, again, tick the box get the job done at three in the morning. But I wanted to be as present with my family as best as I could because I knew the road that I was going down and the challenges that I would be facing. And you know, like people think, oh, fuck, what challenges do you face becoming a doing bodybuilding? Well, Why? a lot of people yeah. just see the tip of the iceberg. That's right. Um, they don't really know what's going on underneath and no. until you're fucking in there. Yes. And again, speaking about your physiological things that happen to you, like, you know, lack of sleep, lack of energy, they're two big things that play a vital role, especially for a family man. Yeah. And if you're fucking getting home at two in the afternoon and your missus is trying to have a conversation with you and one eye is fucking closed and you like all you can think about is I need to get these fucking steps in, like yeah. you know, it's a hard thing to try and manage in yeah. your head and try and get that thing happening. So And for them as well. Yeah. Uh, so you know, we talk speak about that, you know, her being part of it just as much as you yeah as much as it's an individual sport yeah if you've got a family like that it's a team sport yeah <laughs> it's a, it can be a pretty selfish thing as well because it's mm-hmm. i mean you know everything that you do in your day is gonna affect your goal at the end of the day and affect the goal that you want to get to so you know you can have your fucking fish and asparagus and rice or you can go have mcdonald's you know but it's all gonna play a fucking role in your head that's just going to mess with you every single day. So for me, being able to be present with her and being present with my family was like a huge thing. And one thing that we would do every Friday as well, because my boys are to another lady. Yeah. So I'd pick them up every Thursday and then um, our Friday night dinners became a thing where we'd go around the table and be like, you know, what did you enjoy about your day and what are you grateful for? And we would do that every single Friday. You know, I'd ask my son, like, what was the best part of your day and what are you grateful for? And, it's, oh, you know, I can I got to play with my mates today and I'm very really grateful to have this dinner in front of me. And we would do that every single Friday. And to me, that just, that meant the world. That meant that I was grounded. That meant that everything that I was doing throughout my course of the week, I'm okay. okay. Like, nothing's fucking wrong here. <laughs> like, you're good, man. Yeah, you're doing yeah, good. Yeah. But, yeah, you're fucking doing some pretty gnarly things to get to your goal, but... You're good. This comes out yeah. and then that resonates. You know, yeah. it's not chaos. It's there's there it is. Yeah. There's, so, all right, well, let's jump into that sort of things. Like the podcast, we talk about you know sacrifice. We talk about discipline. We talk about goals, um, getting there. Mm. The next question for us: forty two family yeah. working. It, like you said, it's a big commitment for everyone. Mm. Why? Why do we do what we do? <laughs> yeah. is, is, like, I, I don't know. I, I'm still trying to figure that out now for myself. Yeah. I don't understand why I get up and run every morning. I just know that I have to. Yeah. Especially when you, a bit different when you go, you've set yourself a goal. Yeah. And you go, okay, that's what I'm going to do. There's an end result. There's a trophy at the end. Yeah. But I think we were speaking about that. It's mm. There's more to it. Mm. That was something to keep you in line, I think. But this yeah. is something that you, we, you know, you need to do or... How does it work in your head? There's a few things. Um, going back to the first prep that I did, and this is only the surface of it, like back in 2016, I prepped myself. 
I did it all myself. Like I said, did all the fucking training and food research that all did it all. And then in the prep, fucked up. <laughs> like I fell into some pretty hectic um, eating disorders, um, binging, fucking throwing up. It was it was pretty hard. It was pretty fucking hectic, which is one of the reasons why I reached out to Brandon back in 2016 to help me get back to fucking normalizing myself pretty much because I didn't know what was going on. So and, was uh, that like a, was that like because you were ripped for the comp and then you weren't, was it a reflection that you seen in the mirror that, or were you just eating and then going, fuck, I shouldn't have done that? Yeah. So I, and I, that was just the little man in your head was like, going, what are you doing? Yeah. You fucked up. So I, again, and I did pretty well, like for someone that fucking coached themselves um, Correct. did like, you know, did, again, did your own, did your own research and did what, did what you did. I was able to pull a second and I was just like, fuck, this is pretty cool. Like, mm. I think I, I think I well, found something here. That, that's how I'm actually, just so everyone knows, that's how I found it. Yeah. One of the boys posted your shot and I was like, I was in a hole, I was yeah. in a rut and I looked at you and I looked at, I can know that and I was like, yeah. He's my trainer. Yeah. I'm going to see Luke here. And at the time, you were and you hit and mm. your zoom movements and everything like that. And that opened my, because I've always been footy, yeah. footy, 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 mm. lift, 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 D, 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 run hard, train mm. hard, fucking die on your sword. Um, I loved everything that you taught me. Yeah. Yeah, loved it. And, and I, t- I took it up throughout the next three or four years around to Oztag and every sort of team that I coach from yeah. there as well, because it does open up your body a lot. But, you know, to jag second, like you said, from that, mm. you were onto something. Yeah, and so. that, you know, fuck, if I was to go back even further, and just to speak on what you said then, like, um, uh, I guess I'm referring, the photo that you would have seen me and that we're referring about is, um, it was a post photo of me back in 2007 when my son was born, and then that shot of me standing on stage in 2016. So the photo of me, 2007, I was 140 kilos. I was fucking fat, overweight, drinking every single day, loved drugs. I couldn't fucking get enough of it on the weekends. Those dopamine just, hits, just, eh? just yeah. give it to me. Like yeah. fucking pour it all into me. I'd take it all and I couldn't give a fuck about my body. Did not give one fuck about it. How old were you then? Uh, oh, fuck, 2007. Do the math on that. <laughs> oh, really so, was that 14 yeah, years ago? 14 years ago. So 26 or yeah. something like that. Yeah. So still young, dumb, yeah. full of calm. Yeah. And then, testosterone. Yeah. So uh, my son was born um, that year. And it was at that moment that I, I had another life to look after. And there was no way that I was going to get through fucking the rest of me living with him looking at me going, is that my dad? Yeah, right. <laughs> and um, so I made the fucking decision in my head again to fucking to stop it. Yeah. And I did. I was it, was it, a, it, was, it was like, no. Yeah. I, no. I went cold turkey on fucking everything. Yeah. Um, you know, and in, in doing that, like the mates that I was hanging out with at the time, um, you know, I just, I had to cut it. I really did have to cut it. You find out. Who's, yeah. who's there yeah. and who understands yeah. what you're going through or who was just around because you were fun to hang around yeah. or fun in their mind or you're the, you know, for yeah. me it was the life of the party. When I did the, had your moment, exactly the same as me, there was other people who could try and convince me to come back mm. and have a beer or do something like that and then there were the boys who, who would pull it away yeah. and put a soda water in front of you. Yeah. So you find out real quick. Yeah. Don't you? So that was back in 2007. Coming into... 2008, we would have been around about one and a half going on, yeah, maybe 2009. I slipped and um, went out with one of my mates coming from Sydney, went out for a few drinks, ended up fucking being a big night. I got in a fight and I ended up getting locked up. And then again, old mate in my head's like, you understand that there's someone at home that's mm-hmm. looking at you right now. Um, so I'm like, what the fuck am I doing, you know? Mm-hmm. So that was basically, I was done. Yeah. I was done. To me, that was rock bottom. Being thrown in the lockup for the night, doing what I did that night was pretty fucking full on. So to have that fucking thrown at me <laughs> and then to have him come and get me as well. So they came and got me the next morning. So I was just like, fuck this. Like, no. How, how do I, <laughs> yeah. how do I even get through life with this on my shoulder? 
Yeah. So I just made the decision, man, to like change my life, and yeah. I never wanted to go back to that person ever again. Now, when when you did make this change, did you know much about fitness? Did you know about um, training? Yeah. So again, fucking going back even going further. Back, yeah, yeah, let's dive right into it. Back. Yeah. Um, so I I moved to Australia back in '99. Originally, I'm from New Zealand. Um, small place called Tarong or Tauranga, I should say. Probably. Yeah, yeah. Like an elder kid. Born in Tauranga. Uh, moved over here in 1999. So when I was living back home, played footy, uh, rugby, and uh, that was all cool. That was all fun. Played basketball at school as well. And I was sort of still searching for something. You know what yeah. I mean? It was about 16, 17, a friend of mine said, oh, you should come and try Muay Thai. I was like, oh, yeah, I'll give it a crack. Ended up loving it. And that was basically the start of me shuttling myself into this realm of fucking fitness. fitness you know? and understanding. And, and understanding training. a bit yeah. more about yeah. it. And um, another friend of mine at, at the time who was in high school, he was competing as a bodybuilder. So I'd sort of like bouncing between Muay Thai and training with him and learning shit off him. Picking and up bits Picking and up pieces, a lot of stuff yeah. with him and, you know, just learning that fucking old school this is how we train, man. Yes. This is how we train here. This is how we train Muay Thai. This is how I train my weights. Yeah. Like, get in, get the job done. Don't fuck around and, you know, we'll, yeah. we'll talk when we finish. Like, yeah. don't have a conversation to no, now. And you go as hard as you can. Yeah. That's it. And, and we'll if you're not, it's like, hey, yeah. you're not training last mate. Yeah. Get, get and again, you know, fucking leg day, we, we wouldn't leave the gym until we fucking couldn't crawl out of the place, you know what I mean? So that was basically how I was brought up yeah. back then. So you did have a base. I had a base. I had a pretty yeah. strong base yeah. of knowledge of, um, of, of fitness, um, food. Didn't really know much then. I just ate. I was young. We you know, to Just fucking burn it off and, yeah. you know, you'd be all good. Hanging out with my mate that was in the bodybuilding, he sort of like, you know, got me prepared for a few little things here and there um, with regards to the nutrition, but it wasn't, it was nothing that, you know, that, yeah. that wasn't stable enough for me no. to understand. Yeah. Um, moved over here in 99. Um, I did sort of have a bit of a play around um, and look for certain gyms. At that time, Nathan Corbett and John O'Parr, who's still a big name over yeah. in Muay Thai, they were the big names. Um, uh, I think I went to Corbett's gym, but he wasn't there at the time. And I did a few sessions there, and then basically I just – bouncing between gyms, trying to find places that I would sort of... Trying to find a home. Trying to find a home, you know. Because yeah. um, that's massive, man. I've walked into Boston gyms and gone, oh, fuck, it's that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You guys are a bunch of yeah. fucking workers, <laughs> mate. Just, and, and then you walk, I've walked into the other ones and gone, wow. Yeah. Like, this is where I want to be. Yeah. And, and even if I didn't, wasn't part of it yet, and I, and I was on the outside and you could feel you are on the outside, mm. I wanted to be part of that. Mm. These other gyms and all that. So, Yeah. And then I sort of like, again, fucking fucked around with gyms and stuff like that. And then I found something that I really enjoyed doing, which was, um, it's a Brazilian martial art called Capoeira. Now it's far fucking fetched from anything that I've ever done. And I think the challenge of, um, not knowing. Being an amateur. Yeah. Like not point knowing zero, how to do it. Like, point like, zero. Point zero. Like, what is this, man? Again. Like, you're dancing, yeah. you're fighting. Like, what the hell's going on here? So I did that for about probably three to four years. I started training with that. And then again, just became a gypsy and started like fucking finding more gyms. And then I'd always come back to gym training, yeah. um, to weights. Yeah. Um, so that's always been my base of training. But coming back to walking out of... Yeah. yeah. C- coming back to your question of why, why I do what I do, why I now get up at fucking, still get up at three in the yeah. morning. There's no goal. I don't have a goal to step back on stage yet. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, but I'm still up at three. I'm still there training, and it's going back to fucking the 2007 me. Yeah. I don't ever want to see that fucking person again, yeah. man. I don't ever want to look at him in the mirror. Whatever, fucking these are. It's so good that you say that because mate, I wasn't even going to bring these out, but, but that's that's mine there. Don't yeah. let the monster take yeah. over. So. I, if you're watching, if you're not, if you're listening, I write stuff down, I've got quotes, I've got everything, and I read them every day, I carry them around in my gym. Yeah. But that is my biggest fear is inner me mm. and that monster coming out mm. and fucking up everything. Yeah. And I've got a, I've got a fucking few demons floating around inside of me. Yeah. Um, there's some pretty big ones in there. Yeah. He's one of them. Old 2007, mate. Yeah. He's, uh, he's probably the fucking ringleader of them all. Yeah. Um, but there's a couple more that have that sort of came about over the years that have um, gone by. 
Is and that – and these are through experiences that you've had in life? Yeah. Like absolutely. you're holding like, – not to tell – you need to tell every one of them, but, but things that happen in your life affect you. Yeah. And then it's very hard to make peace with it. Mm-hmm. And you carry it around. I think one way that I've been able to move forward from those people is to not ignore it, not say it didn't happen, but be happy with it, make peace yeah. with it. And move on. Yeah, I mean they're still there, but it's very, very much easier to control. Mm. Where previously I'd walk around filthy, mm. like feel fuck that person, yeah. fuck that. Why did that happen? All this mentality of yeah. why, why to me, why this, why yeah. that. But um, yeah. So, so up every day into that, burying the yeah, you know, the little man in your head. Yeah. Um, moving to the future. What do you do? How do you? Do you, do you just keep going? Is that your goal? Is, yeah, is, is that it to keep it down? Or? For, for me, for me personally, yeah, I, I have to keep going. Like, I, I can't stop. Yeah. Now, whether that whether that means I'm fucking that 60-year-old dude in the gym, fucking, what the fuck? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> the bloody fucking, by then you'll have the stringer on, yeah, you know. you'll have the string you singlets know, by then. Right? Or, so. or am I looking more into keeping my body um, a little bit more able and fit? I think I you've got to... Too, to um, do you know the, your second? Is it another daughter? No, so we're not going to find you're out. We're not going to find yeah. out. Surprise. Yeah. Well, there's another good thing, mate. You're being an older father, myself as well, without the mm. young ones. By the time you're 60, you're going to be leading, you know, someone coming out of the teenage years yeah. into there. I cannot think myself better role model that I want to be with, with no alcohol, no that, mm. a training plan and uh, the same attitude that you yeah. have. Like um, I, I love weights, you know. I, I love training, but... Um, I think now, and me and my partner have spoken about it, like I've got a lot of um, the physical ailments that I need to correct, like my lower back, my right hip, um, they're a little bit fucking out of whack at the mm-hmm. moment, so I need, to, I need to get them back on, back on track. Um, so, so do you live with pain with that? Is, is like, it painful? I mean, it's there. Like I'm sitting here now, and been sitting there the last forty minutes, fifty minutes, and you know, it's could have got there. Could have yeah. got you a better chair. Yeah. Right? <laughs> it's there, and I feel it every day. And it's just like, oh, you just fucking, you just part of me. This pain is part of me. Mm-hmm. Um, but I know that I can, I can let that go. There's a lot um, behind that pain as well. Again, myself and my partner, we've spoken about it, and it's not just physical. It's a lot of um, a lot of mental issues to, to, do, to deal with as well um, coming over the years and again for, for me uh, talking about the stuff that I've done in the past again you know if you're not talking about it you're not getting the word out and you're not sort of um, you want to be able to be that person to to, to not just hide it confront it yeah and, but, it's like, but not confronting it there's different things like people talk about it and but sometimes people talk about it and they brag about it. Yeah. Where there's a difference between you and me talking about it and you come to an, uh, an understanding or that's helping. Mm. That's moving forward. Yeah. That's accepting it, dealing with it and making sure it doesn't happen yeah. again. Yeah. hundred um, percent, man. And yeah. um, again, you know, these things that I've done in the last couple of years that I'm fucking certainly not proud of. Um, and it's something that I've learned to deal with. Um, learned to talk about it as well um and being able to bring that out and just be aware of it as well you know and not hide it and not and not keep it down because if you're keeping it down then it's oh, easy oh, oh, and size just getting bigger and bigger yeah, and it becomes, another, it becomes yeah. another ring leader so um well mate and that and to branch out on it the more things like this and and like you said you speaking about it this will impact someone you will see in six months' time mm. and they would have heard this or they would have seen your story and seen what you've done and they might just say one thing to you. Mm. Like, hey, mate, I heard you about that. I'm, I'm doing this. And if that ignites something in them yeah. to make a change, I think it's all worth it. Yeah. I've restored faith in humanity yeah. through talking about it, yeah. through, through getting through and, and going, look, we all got our damn good. And you don't have to dive into the whole story you can with your close mates and everything like that you don't go up to a stranger and go hey mate guess mm. what I fucking did yeah and, yeah you know but definitely um, if you're facing something at home or you've got that something like you said sitting inside or what Lukey was talking about 
It, the first step is to one acknowledge it, yeah, and and basically acknowledge it to the person in the mirror mm. who's looking back at you, mm-hmm. and then be be able to you know, find someone to talk to. Yeah, about. and that and that's the hardest part. I've spoken to a, a, another friend of mine as well, and you know we've both been through the same sort of thing, and um, reaching yeah. out is probably the hardest thing for someone that is um, dealing with mental health issues or anything like that, you know, and it's 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 hard. Like, you see a lot of people, that, you know, I'm here for you, reach out, I'm mm-hmm. here, but it's like, it's the fucking hardest thing to do, man, yeah. because you... And you then know, you, you reach out to them and you reach out to the wrong person. Yeah. They don't know what to do. Yeah. They sit there frozen. Yeah. Like, so, and then if you, you get one shot yeah. before you're back to needing to build yourself up for six months yeah. to, to reach out to someone yeah. again. So... So it really is the hardest thing to do. And um, again, I I can't speak for everyone, but for me, I just took that look at myself in the mirror and and, and had a fucking long, hard look at myself, man, and and had a big conversation. And I guess what I'm trying to get at is it did lead me to a point where I'd had enough and I was ready. (laughs) I was ready to go. So I had to take a fucking big step back and really just fucking nut things out of my head to the point where I could have a conversation um, and not go through with the whole thing that I was going through at the time. Um, and this is where I was able to speak to a few of my friends about it and they just said, yeah, man, like you, reaching out is, is really, really hard. If you can manage just a little bit of what's going on in your head for like the shortest amount of time and just chip away at that, stay away from fucking everyone saying that we're here for you, we're here for you, because you know they're there. But... Just get through that fucking level of, of that next that one. Yeah, just, just, well, that's what I'm, I'm huge on, and I that's how I flipped everything with myself and everything was I had to forget mm. who I was and what I achieved or anything like that or who I thought I was, mm. and hit a point zero, and then that day is forward because mm. you got to. It's the shittest thing to say, but when you do hit rock, hit rock bottom, there's usually a little bit more to come. Yeah. And it's rather sink or swim at that moment. Yeah. Um, and, mate, yeah, the, the, that conversation with the man in the mirror, it's fucking crazy. Yeah. If you do it, because there's no, you can't lie. Yeah. You can tell yourself one thing. <laughs> mate, actually, some schizos can probably do it, make themselves believe <clears throat> that it's, it's all all right. But if you're having, like, that honest conversation, like you said, yeah, um, yeah man, it's... Like you said, you think you're at rock bottom and then that conversation brings you down yeah. if you have a proper look. But 1% better from that day. Mm. I mean, Goggins talks about it all the time, uh, just gradually getting through it, mm. going through again. And that comes to, like yourself now, you're one of those blokes, by the sounds of it, it's all or nothing. Yeah. You know? yeah. It doesn't matter what it is, yeah. it's fucking... Unbelievable discipline, food, I'm going to win, I'm lifting, mm. I have to get these steps in, this mm. is what I have to do, yeah. I have to tick this box or it's, I'm out of the piss yeah. and I'm going until someone fucking really stops me because yeah. I fucked up. Yeah. So, part of life. And I love a challenge, you know. Well, that's the next thing. Yeah, yeah I, lo- I love a challenge and I love a lot of things that are thrown to me and, and now understanding my body, I can pick and choose the challenges at the moment yeah. because... You know, if you said to me, fucking, you do the Spartan race or something like that, like, that's a fucking huge challenge, but yeah. it's something that I probably wouldn't do yeah. right now with the way that my fucking hips and back are going at the moment. Yeah. Once I get them sorted out, then, yeah, you know, you probably see me fucking yeah, yeah, hanging yeah. off a fucking rope or something, yeah, yeah, yeah. doing something crazy. Yeah. Or just... New challenge, yeah, keep you going. Yeah. And that comes back down to routine, yeah. setting goals, and that sets you up... The, what you learn or what people can learn from your story and discipline and, and you know, making sure everything's on song at day one, mm. prepped, you know, you know what you're doing before you do it, you can translate that into anything. You can mm. translate that into money and business. Yeah. You can translate into that into a project that you're doing at home. Yeah. You know, it might be building a cubby house. It could be doing renovations. Yeah. A lot of times people look at the overall picture and mm. it's too much. Yeah. It's gone, you know. But if they, you know, just use that discipline, that 1% day, that just nail one board on that cover, yes. Yeah. It's one step closer yeah. to the thing, you know. A, get those warps, get those things. It's a transferable skill. 
Mm, very much so. And I think that's where fitness and, and sports and everything like that comes into it. The last thing I want to touch on is I want to go back to, I know a lot of people who go, you know, bodybuilding isn't a sport mm. because they don't know. They think anyone can just go and lift and yeah. get big and do that. But I have to say it is one of the fucking most mental, mm. disciplined, crazy things. Have you, throughout Muay Thai, throughout any other sport, rugby in that, that you've played, what do you think is hard? Is this one of the hardest, like mentally, um, or, or is this one of the uh, – how do you, yeah, how do you yeah, find definitely, it? Definitely how does it range? Mentally, any time of the day and train. Mm. Like, that's fucking no effort in that. When you decide in your head that, all right, I've, I've – been at this fucking gym for two years now. I've, I've done the eight week challenge, did pretty good. Fucking old mate coach reckons that I could stand on stage. Right, I'll give it a fucking nudge. When you're in it, man, I believe, for me personally, what I've done over the many, many years being in the fitness industry, that was one of the hardest fucking mental challenges that I've had to face, especially at the time of my life right now. Being a family person, mm. um, it's tough man it really is tough how many times a day did that little man go just grab that yeah oh, oh fuck this i'm know, not doing it you know and i never there was not a day that went by where my missus would want something she'd want some hot chips or oh. you know, I'd be like, go get it yeah i get fucked and you had to sit there and smell, smell it, it and smell it look at it look at it watch her eat it listen to her eat it <sighs> tell me how good it was and it was like well oh, fuck that's real cool. You know, I'm, I'm here eating fucking fish in a Yeah, stars. yeah. Mate, That's you good. pretend putting one of those chips yeah. in the <laughs> And it translates to yeah. that. Yeah, um, right. So it's a Muay Thai fight, prepping for a fight. Yeah, it's, like anything. It's pretty mentality, but this was... Yeah, this was it's, it's just a mental grind, okay. you know? Like... And lifting's I, the easy part. Is that it? It's, like, that's, that's the fun the, part. The lifting, turn up to the gym and fucking and eating your food. <laughs> that's all the easy shit, man. Like, anyone can do that. You know, you could basically fucking get to a point where you could go, oh, I look pretty good here. Yeah. I'm about 10% body fat, got a bit of muscle. I'm quite happy. Yeah. But I wanted to go past that. <laughs> I wanted to go past that point of being happy and just be fucking ridiculously shredded. Yeah. And that's what I did. And for me to get there, I had to take myself to a certain fucking degree of craziness. Yeah. You know, Again, we're not the people in the gym that are fucking grunting and grinding no. away and fucking making all this noise and dropping plates and stuff. Like, that's not us. It's what we're doing in our head that makes us yeah. pretty special people. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> to get to that, to and get, um, to get to that point. Yeah, that's what this is all about. It's trying to, you know, branch out and show people. Like, at the end of the day, as well, we're normal people. Yeah. You know, I've been a tradie. I've been chasing the dream of an NRL contract, professional sportsman, but I still. You know, most of my life live week to week. Yeah, have to save if I want to go on a holiday. There's yeah. no, there's no special thing. It's just do it. Yeah, to, you know, and I'm the same, man. I'm not a fucking, I'm not a fitness influencer. I'm not yeah. out here fucking flogging products or anything like no. that. I'm just a dad, just a family man that fucking loves to train. And loves at it. certain times of my life, I know that I can fucking flick a switch, yeah. and I want. Yeah, and then I can turn that switch. And I'm here. <laughs> I think that's yeah. I think that's one of my biggest traits as well. And, and Ellie always stuck by me when I got huge. She goes, "I knew you always. Once you go like that, mm. it's back on." So my biggest point to everyone, and I say it every day. I say it in my stories. If I can do it, and I'm fucked in the head. Yeah. If you're one percent better than me yeah. in the head, you're sweet. Yeah. You, know, you can do it. You just got to get your ass out the door. And find that thing you love, mm. find that thing that you enjoy and just, you know, throw some dedication at it, throw yeah, some man. sacrifice and start working it out. Yeah. So I don't know if you want to or if you're not, do people follow you, follow your story online? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm not a fucking fitness influencer, no. so, you know, I'm just the everyday person, man. Yeah. Just like what you said, you know, we're just out here fucking, doing a thing. Just, just doing our thing. Yeah. Like, yeah, and if you want to fucking follow me and watch me post fucking images of cakes on my Instagram <laughs> stories, then... You can find me at Lukey Boy seventy eight. Yeah, that's me. Um, even during my contest prep, like there was like a few little things that I'd put up. Yeah, you know. Well, mate, that's hardly, what that's what kept me going. Yeah, I never yeah. saw me with my shirt off. No, um, and like I said, every now and then I would do it, no. but then it would lose traction of yes. why I'm doing this shit. Like I'm not on air 
posting fucking half naked pictures of myself. But that's why I love watching your stories because it's real. Yeah. It's, it's like, what's this bloke actually yeah. doing? It's not, oh, I made it today. Yeah. How good do I look? All right. It's, it's check out that chicken and rice he's eating. Yeah. Check out his refeed. <laughs> he's having a refeed. Yeah, he's I'm having still a refeed. doing it, man. And, and that, because same thing, I'm. Oh, I stare at those shoes for mm. 40 minutes in the morning. Ah, yeah. Ah, you know, or get in the gym, I'm feeling sore as I'm putting the wraps on to do some boxing. Ah, and that for me, you know, I always say to everyone, fill your social media. Don't fill it with anything fucking negative. Like all the puppy fucking things yeah. that you have to. Yeah. yeah. Social media is so fucked with negativity and everything yeah. like that. If you don't surround yourself with people like yourself, mm-hmm. you know, that's all my feed is, is other dudes getting chewed, yeah. getting barrels, and I dream yeah. about getting barrels, or training, or running, or something to do with food, or fitness, and all that. And yeah. now that's all it's filled with. I don't get no political crap, I don't get anything like that. Yeah. So I think that's the main reason if, if we turn one person or one person, the, and it's the silent people who you affect mm. the most. It's not the people who write to you. It's not the people who go. Yeah. It's, the, it's the ones that just quietly watch your stuff and then they'll will lace up their shoes. And yeah. Go, or they'll get in the gym or they'll get that fish and rice for Yeah. <laughs> Man, <laughs> and, and I'm, yeah, I've done it before. <laughs> I've bugging, I've cut up my extra brisket. Actually, that's what I was going to get you today. <laughs> I fucking, I bought it in the fridge. I thought, I promised <laughs> Lukey brisket the whole day. But I had to get it on it like, Midnight last night, so yeah. ready for you now. Yeah, yeah. And I fuck, no, it's not. That's all good, man. I'll have to drop it in another time. Another yeah. time. My fucking my fats are high now, so yeah. Oh, because that's what I was dangling it in front of you the whole time you're doing the thing. I was like, I'll cook it, I'll cook yeah. it, I'll cook it. So, mate. Um, lastly, are you going to sign up for another comp? What's the go? Yeah, look. Um, again, if you've been following me and what I've been doing on my social medias and stuff, you would have seen me post a little fucking hashtag thing for Project Twenty Three. Twenty Three, obviously, is two thousand twenty three. Having been um, had a good run at this now and being coached by a really reputable coach, and anyone out there is thinking about jumping on stage, outsource a coach. Yeah, really do, man. Like, don't do what I did. Don't go about it yourself. Yeah, because you'll fucking lose sight. You won't be prepared for what's going to come after, because that's the biggest rebound that's coming out of show and not knowing what's next. Yeah. So, Project Twenty Three is basically we are looking at going. For another run, 23. Um, <laughs> it's a bit of a funny thing, but um, with ICN, again, I won my divisions, but I didn't win the overall. Overall means like you win the whole fucking yes, I understand. The whole thing. Yeah. When you win, you get a sword. <laughs> so I'm like, well, fuck, I want the sword. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> I'm looking for that fucking sword. So I want it yeah. in there on the thing. Yeah, so, so that's I'm, it. Yeah. I want my fucking sword. So. <laughs> I come back close to fucking holding that thing, so I'm like, oh, well, I could go at it again. But the feedback I got from the judges and my coaches and everything like that said, like, put on a bit of size, man, and you yeah. fucking, you'll be there, you'll be there. What did you end up down to? Oh, yeah, so again, started, say, 85 kilos, 84.7, and our stage weight was 71.6 kilos. Wow. My lowest weigh-in over the entire prep was 70.3, and that's the lowest I've ever been, ever. In, wow. Um, any of my fitness fucking journeys that I've done over the last few years. Um, but yeah, like you said, if you look at it going in, oh, there's not too many of them, but check out Lukey's physique. You were ripped and there was muscle there. So yeah. I don't know how you, you lost that last yeah. three kilos. Yeah. Or, you know, but, um, it, just, it just came off me. So what are you now? Back walking around. So I'm at 80, I'm at 80 kilos at yeah. the moment and I'm happy. At like, a happy 80. I'm fucking happy, man. Like a lot of people. Body's yeah. feeling good. Well, I feel good. I put on a bit of fat around my body and that's, yeah. I never intended to stay the way that I was no. stage. You can't. Forever. No. Not even fucking for two weeks. No. It's unhealthy. The, the whole goal for me in regards to post-comp was to put on some body fat and put on some size and basically increase my relationship with food. Yeah. Uh, what I mean to increase, I mean just, you know, start enjoying food again, you yeah. know, start having dinners with the family and sitting down. That's the and, next thing. There's no social side yeah, to, to bodybuilding, yeah, is there? There's yeah. no, we're going out for dinner. You and, can, man. You can do it. But it's like, fucking, you're that person sitting there looking at everyone else's meal while you're like trying to figure out, oh, how much? Oh, can I eat that salad? Oh. <laughs> can I eat that? And there was a few times, man, where I did go out. I did yeah. go out and, um, you know, quite a bit of a few friends and birthdays and stuff. And, yeah. Obviously, didn't drink, didn't eat what was there. We just had to sort of make do. And that's just the sacrifices, you know. A sacrifice that I'd made. I went through my whole family's birthday. My prep was also through Christmas. Like, the fucking worst time to try and 
diet, yeah. basically. So my son's birthday is on Christmas Day. There's Christmas. There's my partner's birthday, which was in November. My other son's birthday, which is in March. My daughter's birthday, which was in March also. Cake. Fucking. <laughs> There's just cake and feeds everywhere. Strawberries, man. Yeah. That's what got me through. But it's, you know, you don't account for those things. Yeah. You just like oh yeah fuck, let's go and then next minute something happens something comes up and you're like oh fuck, yeah. fuck here we go again yeah, yeah. lastly just back on the on the food while we're still mm. quickly into that foods there was nothing processed from you no you so, know there were like i hear people going oh there's keto snacks it's got no carbs oh there's uh no sugar drinks mm. cans of drinks there's no yeah. sugar bloody little chocolate bars yeah. or something like that there was none of that no nah. I had um, just... everything that I had and that I ate and that I consumed, I'd say 95% of it was whole foods and the last 5% of it basically came from supplements. The supplements that I did have were protein powder, no particular fucking brand, go to chemist warehouse and buy the one. fuck if I was on special, I'd buy it. <laughs> but again, in saying that, I make sure it didn't have all the fucking yeah. nasties in it. Correct. You know, I'd order some shit off... Uh, was it Black Belt Protein or Bolt Nutrients? They're pretty cool uh, franchises out there that sell good protein powder, good quality protein powder. Uh, so protein powder was uh, a supplement, creatine, the multivitamin, fish oils, vitamin D, and that was it, man. Sort of. That was it. I had pre-workout as well, but I would only have it on certain days when I would sort of like feel really low. Mm. Um, no, I don't. I don't have pre workout. Yeah, I have um, better alanine. Yeah, yeah, better alanine. Uh, alanine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. See, that's more yeah. of a fucking. So during prep, your fucking caffeine intake gets pretty high. Um, okay. But I couldn't have coffee at three in the morning and then go train because I I like to drink like a big coffee, yeah. black coffee. So I'd have a pre workout, just a little fucking shot of whatever I was having, and that was it, man. Didn't take BCAs. Um, waste of money. So if anyone out there. <laughs> Don't fucking waste your money on BCAs. Fucking oh, hell, it's all I've been yeah. chugging. Yeah. Like, I thought, mate, after runs and stuff like that, or during runs, I've been branch yeah. chain, branch chain, branch chain. Uh, what do you reckon? <laughs> Fill me in. No. We're not going anywhere. Just <laughs> quickly. It's a part of the fucking industry, man. It's all a rot. Yeah, <laughs> right. There's not much in your BCAs that are actually doing anything for your body. Because for people at home, branch chain amino acid is protein broken down mm. into. But your body, areas. your body produces it anyway. So yeah, basically, right. if you can restore your body's intake from whole foods, there's no need to take the excess crap. You know, if you're on a keto diet as well or the carnivore diet, you're fucking you're on the money. I'm sweet. You're good yeah. because you're getting all all your vitamins and minerals out of your good fats okay. and meats and stuff. Like well, that. what about say mid marathon? What do you reckon? Mid marathon, mid marathon, chugging BCAAs like because yeah. obviously you got to refuel as, yeah. as you go. Like, mid -marathon. I, I can't speak on running, and you know I'm not a runner. But you're talking if your diet's on point for a day to day person, you don't need that extra crap. You if either. you're going to the gym once a day yeah. or doing a little bit of training, yeah. okay, and, and looking to get healthy and fit. Yeah, I suppose yeah, that I dove into an athlete sort of thing. Yeah, which would be but, a completely uh, different sort of focus. Yeah, I mean. You could have a very similar effect from taking um, a Powerade with a bit of salt and water. You know what I mean? Mixing mm -hmm. that up. One of the things that my coach actually got me to take, he said, you know, don't worry about BCAs, but have this, which was diet right cordial, which was your flavor, yeah. um, water and salt. So often I'd have that in the morning at three o'clock because, uh, oh, and a little bit of sugar. A little bit of table sugar just with a carbohydrate intake. Yeah. And that's basically all BCAs is, man. It's just carbohydrates, a little bit of salt to fucking replenish your body, and um, yeah, a little bit of flavor. Hectic. So there's a cheap fucking BCAAs for you. Wow, 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 sugar, wow, 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 wow. <laughs> salt. Fucking brains yeah. melting right there. Yeah. How much money have I wasted yeah. on that shit? And a bit of diet and cordial and fucking good to go. Oh, lastly, while well, I got you, do you know much about sodium, soda waters? Did you drink much of that through comp? Or does that retain weight or what is it? What nah, does that do? man, so if there are people out there that, don't, that know much or don't know much about uh, this side of um, bodybuilding and comp prep and all, all that type of stuff, you may have heard a term thrown out there called peak week. Peak week is obviously your final week leading to stage. And there's lots of things that come out around peak week, like water manipulation, sodium manipulation, and what I mean by that is you could start your week, say your show's on a Saturday, so you start your week on a Monday, you start loading fucking 
six to eight liters of water on Monday, and then as you get through the week, that tapers down to like you fucking narrow just sipping water by the end of the week. I didn't do that. Same thing with sodium. Some people start their sodium quite high at the beginning of the week, and then they start chipping away till you've literally fucking got no sodium. Thing with sodium though is um, that's what gives you the pump. So if you've been cutting sodium through that week, you could potentially have done yourself a fucking disservice and you'd be standing on stage flat and no muscle pump. So the other thing too is what a lot of people don't get is your body is made up of fucking 70% water. Correct. Why would you want to fucking manipulate the water intake that you're consuming? So you want to be able to fill your body up with water. Yeah. Now, when I say fill, you're not loading. You're not drinking eight liters and yeah. walking out on stage going, hey. You're just being out. consistent the whole yeah. way through. Yeah. Um, so my my water intake and my sodium intake did not change the entire prep from day one to the end. To, of, to, the, to, the end. to now. To now. Yeah. It, it never changed, not one bit. And if anything, the day of show on stage, I was probably having more sodium that I had in that one moment throughout my entire prep it was for a purpose it was yeah. for a fucking muscle pump okay. basically yeah. um so i'd be standing there my coach would be sort of like telling me to do push-ups and stuff and he'd be like hold your hand out and he'd dump a fucking whack of salt and he's like drink that no oh. like, right, so fucking have that but like it's crazy man like when you get down to such low levels of body fat and you can actually see the effect of having a really fucking, like a pinch of salt heck and what it does to your body having um a couple of fucking those, the snakes, the lollies, yeah, as well, like a little bit of sugar. Like your whole body just changes, and it's like for me, I was like fucking blown away. Like, holy shit, that's crazy. But um, yeah, like nothing changed. And I guess if you're a runner, yeah, and you would have known this when you hey, fucking yeah, cramped up, when yeah. I fucked up, yeah. So excuse me, yeah, keep your sodium intake, you know, reasonable. Yeah, there's no need to fucking yeah, to yeah. cut. Or anything like that. No. Keep the, re- the reason I ask and all that is because that's all I drink. If, if I yeah. need a, well, I'm water, 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 water. But if I need a fizzy drink, I'm soda water. Yeah. Or you know Mount Franklin's, which have got the natural flavour in it. Yeah. So yeah. There's no disservice in like yeah. I said in having them at yeah. all. Yeah. They, they serve their purpose. Hundred percent. So yeah, don't reach for a can of coke. Yeah. Perhaps they have that. Right. If you need a fizzy drink, there you go. <laughs> yeah. Mate, um, unreal. Oh, I'm, it's a long time away, Project 23. Yeah, it is, man. Let's get back in here while the prep's going. Yeah. yeah. And, you know, we'll see what you've changed yeah. and where you're at. Yeah. But, um, mate, I can't thank you enough for coming on. Oh, man, um, I appreciate you having me here. Yeah, beginning of this and my adventure, um, like what we were talking about with uh, Sacrifice and Discipline, mm. you know, what the podcast is doing and what I'm trying to build and that. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah. Thanks for being here from the start. Yeah, I'm looking forward to seeing it grow, man. So it's going to be fucking epic. Yeah, I know. We'll see where we're at. When you're going on stage, we'll see how 3am 365 is and see where any given chance is. And um, see if we're still sitting here in in the (laughs) studio or if I've actually put that first bit on the cubby house and nailed it on. Yeah, I reckon you've all man ticked the box. There we go.